video it's called a Combergus video, which is a close-up of a craft, so close that you can see the occupants. It is 100% real, and I was there as that was filmed. The whole footage has been analyzed from our scientific board for two and a half weeks, frame by frame, pixel by pixel, and this is 100% genuine footage. Okay, we're going to get into the topic today of ultimate disclosure. I believe this is where we're headed, and much of what I'm going to show you today is actual footage of several scenarios involving UFOs, UAPs, all of it, even commentary on it, and there is a very high purpose for this. And then I'm going to get into the topic of Nephilim. I'm going to get into the topic of all this stuff that is becoming a cultural sensation and phenomenon. There's a lot of good talk about it, a lot of good teaching, and some is actually I think a little bit destructive, and I want to go into some of this today. We're going to bring some balance, but I'm going to tell you, I believe we're headed for an ultimate disclosure. Now, please, if you would share this right now, because what we're going to get into, I feel an unction and a prompting from the Spirit of God to talk about this, because we need to bring some order, a little bit of right-sizing to some of these scenarios, yet not in any way deny the fact that these things are happening. So this is going to be a very healthy, but very clear and direct understanding of this scenario. So um, I also want to thank the partners of this ministry. If you're a partner here and you're helping us bring information and broadcasts and of course uh, prophetic journalism around the world, you are just such a blessing. We're so grateful for you. And if you want to become a part of our partner family, please consider doing so today. Please do it right away. Go to josephz.com. We will call you. We will reach out to you. We love our partners. And if you're going to partner today or you're thinking about it, you feel a prompting to do so, please comment right in the feed, partnering today. We want to welcome you to the family and we want to thank you. Also, don't forget to get on our text to join list at 719-719-3637. That is for when we go live spontaneously or for a special event that we can text you and you can Click the link to a live feed, an announcement, an update, and you're with us wherever we are. Now, if we can't be on some of these platforms, we can send this text to you. You click it, and you're with us wherever we are without any hindrances, if you get my meaning. Also, let me say to you, we have uh, this, this brand new book I wrote called Demystifying the Prophetic. You need to get this. This will help you walk through this. Uh, some of the information and season that we're in. You need the word of the Lord to guide you through this time, and this will greatly help you. I encourage you to get this right away at josephz.com and leave us a good review wherever you are, uh, whether it's Amazon, goodreads.com. I'm so appreciative to you, but here's the big thing. We want to help people. That's why this book is available. Now, some of the things I'm going to be talking about today, I'm going to be talking about from my book, Servants of Fire. I actually deal with the UFO phenomenon in here. I'm going to talk to you about scriptures that point at this. So you don't want to miss that, josephz.com. Now, let's get into this. This is really important, and I think it's very vital. So let's start with the clip I opened with, talking about this ship, this craft that was in the sky that somebody filmed. I want you to look at this because you're going to see this vessel, and I want you to understand what you're looking at. And as they zoom in, you can actually see these little entities that are inside of this craft. Now, they claim this is real. Of course, everything that's out there on the internet, if it's on the internet, it must be real. But this one has just a, a feeling to it, a, a realism to it that I think is important. So let's watch it one more time. Listen carefully to what the narrator is saying as they show this. Now, this was taken many years ago, but let's take a good look at this and you be the judge. But I do think there's not nothing here. Let's watch together. This is the video it's called a Combergus video, which is a close-up of a craft, so close that you can see the occupants. It is 100% real, and I was there as that was filmed. The whole footage has been analyzed from our scientific board for two and a half weeks, frame by frame, pixel by pixel, and this is 100% genuine footage. Okay, if we could, Elijah, let's, let's show it on the monitor here. I want to come right over to it. Um, this is what they're talking about is this, this entity here. You see this one, there's another one next to it. But if you look at that, you can make out the face of a nefarious little uh, whatever. Now, I think when you see these and they really appear. Now, my wife had an encounter with this type of scenario, bound it, rebuked it in Jesus' name, and it left. 
I got to tell you, what I think these are is little avatar bodies that have demon spirits inside of them. And I believe there's some form of permission through a technology uh, where they can have physical bodies like this so demons can house, have a housing to walk into this earth. And I believe this is what we're seeing. I'm going to go into this extensively today for the purpose of hope and giving you answers to why I think this is going to happen. I believe ultimately they're going to bring an ultimate disclosure to everybody for a purpose of deception. I believe this will be a last days, end times deception that's coming to the earth. But let's continue. I want to show you a number of clips. Now, let me look right at you. Let me show you a number of clips, uh, starting out with a disc that was in, impacted by radio waves or electromagnetic waves in a certain area, and it knocked potentially a UFO out of the sky, and it began to bounce across the ground. And I'll let you discover or decide what it is. Then I'm going to show you a couple more very interesting uh, close-up, high-definition images or videos of what many people are calling uh, these unidentified flying objects or uh, UAPs today. So let's, let's take a look at it. Uh, you watch with me and I'm going to give you a lot of information today. So let's watch this together. We are currently observing an alleged UFO incident taking place at White Sands, the very locale where humanity achieved its first successful nuclear bomb detonation. The fascination that UFOs seem to have with our nuclear capabilities is well documented. Given that one of the significant byproducts of nuclear experimentation is the emission of electromagnetic pulses, which have the potential to disrupt electronic and communication networks, it isn't particularly surprising that White Sands has been a hotbed for reports concerning UFO sightings and mysterious accidents. Let's go to the next one here. Now, we just watched that they said electromagnetic pulses may have knocked this thing out of the air, and that's why it did that. But let's let's look at what they're calling the Metapod UFO. Somebody zoomed in on an object in the sky, and it was changing and morphing as it was being recorded. Now, I believe this could be a, a wicked sign and a wonder in the heavens, and it could just be interdimensional, demonic activity taking place. It could be some strange technology. There's a lot of things, but I want to show you a number of these because I'm going somewhere today. Please watch this. Okay, I think everybody gets it. Let me take a look here again at you. I want to say very clearly, these things are manifesting. There's things happening in the heavens, signs in the sky. I'm going to show you another clip. It's kind of quick, this next clip, but it's what they call the jellyfish UFO. And this is not the first time this entity, object, UFO, unidentified flying object has been seen. But this one's kind of in high def. And I just want you to look at it, use discernment. But uh, this is kind of a, a creepy thing. So they, they've tried to explain this away a few different times. Uh, they had a different one where it went across a base. But here's one that's even closer on the camera. Let's watch this and maybe we'll watch it more than once just to understand it. Here we go. Crazy. In Miami, Florida, this is a woman's ring camera on her home that caught this flying through the air. And when you look at it, I mean, it could be a number of things, but I got to tell you, there's so many of these issues going on. Let it play one more time. Okay. Now let me go into another thing. Let me just come right back at you here. Um, I'm going to show you a clip by Clayton Morris, and he begins to talk about an interview, or he's interviewing a man that has insider information, things that he's uh, discussing. He gets on the topic of a UFO worldwide monitoring system and then jumps over 
to the topic of Antarctica. Now, Antarctica has been something that whenever I hear it, something in my spirit, man, just there's a, I, I sense things, right? And you, you just, there's things going on there. Now, where it starts and stops, you know, it's hard with these things because a lot of people come up with crazy stuff. But when there's people that are saying the same thing and there's people that come forward, go on record, and they begin to out things as whistleblowers, I think it's important to at least give it a listen. And I have some serious um, intrigue with this because I believe where this is headed is it's being a, a narrative that's being marshaled towards a point in our society that they want to begin to bring control to the masses. I believe that's where this is really headed. But let's listen to this. Let's watch this interview by Clayton Morris as he begins to talk about this topic. Let's watch. What has been found in studies is that wherever there's UFO activity, there's often a, a burst of gamma wave activity or, or, or gamma uh, electromagnetic waves. And so the NSA is, has been able to set up a worldwide monitoring system where they can detect the appearance of UFOs anywhere on Earth. And so they've been detecting UFOs down in Antarctica for, for decades. There, there were reports on these UFO activities near Antarctica. And we, we know that the NSA has been monitoring signals traffic from Antarctica for a long time, as they do all over the world. But what's very interesting was uh, these many reports about activities in Antarctica from various whistleblowers suggesting that there was a, a base there. I've interviewed whistleblower Eric Hecker. He was stationed in Antarctica. He worked for Raytheon. He was a defense contractor. He worked there at the base. Um, he is now a whistleblower. Um, he talked on my show about the massive military base in Antarctica and how that base at the South Pole is actually a giant air traffic control tower that monitors, as you point out, interstellar craft. Now, this has been confirmed by the Navy, U.S. US Air Force whistleblowers. Again, <laughs> members of the United States military, not me, I'm not saying this, this is the United States military confirming this. The institutions that um, govern the national security agenda over the next decade know that the U.S. needs to prepare the public for disclosure because our future lies in space, in the, the, in the uh, construction and the development of fleets of spacecraft using advanced energy propulsion systems, using anti-gravity uh, principles, torsion field principles, because this is the only way you can keep up with the extraterrestrials that okay. are out so what we see here is this conversation that's growing. There's people that are seeing something. They're experiencing things. Now, you got to remember, when you have people that are not completely taken in with the Word of God, they're not taking the Word of God in, but they're seeing real things happening, whether it's in Antarctica, in the air, uh, you've got military officials, uh, service people that are really experiencing things. Now they're trying to sort out what they're seeing. And so obviously, most people just go to the natural and they say, these things are happening. There's craft, there's things. They tell us they're interdimensional or they're interstellar. They're from our even maybe our galaxy. And there's things happening with commerce and trade with all these other civilizations. Well, it would take, it would not take much for a nefarious, wicked, demonic agenda to communicate that to individuals that see real things, they're really experiencing it, but they get this communication from these uh, entities, and obviously they must be telling the truth. Why would they lie to us? Could it be that there's true demonic conversation going on through these type of nefarious scenarios? And this is where a lot of this data is coming from. So these people believe with, with their heart, with their mind, they say, my goodness, this is happening. Humanity needs to be warned. Well, they could actually be pawns in a greater scheme where they're being told these things and then telling the masses almost as if they would be like a form of when they call that controlled opposition. I don't believe that's what these men are that are saying it. I think they're really seeing things and then trying to blow the whistle on it but the information that they're blowing the whistle about could be information that is twisted, contorted, and manipulated by these wicked entities or powers that be that want this narrative out there and empowering people that are really seeing real things, but they're just not giving you the accuracy of what these things are because it's the only information they have. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, if somebody were to say, 
I saw something, and it's obviously from this other solar system, or it's from another area. Why? Because they told me, or I discovered the data on it. I see it, and they talk about having this communication, or these entities say, we're communicating with you from another solar system. We are from another planet, another area, and we have ships and, and massive technology, and we're here to make our appearance eventually. And people that hear that, they want to blow the whistle on it and get humanity ready. But what if it's demonic entities lying? saying that that's what they are, that's where they're coming from. What they're really trying to do is prepare people for a future scenario where they say, we created you, we're coming here, and we're going to make a big reveal eventually, and then you can realize why all religions really just all point to us, and we really are your creators, and we really are the ones you need to worship and trust, and we're here to right all the wrongs of your planet. Or it'll be an invasion scenario, uh, like Project Blue Beam, Project Blue Book, all these things that they put out there, where they pretend there's an invasion going on, and then the government agencies of the world marshal together and say, we're under attack, everything's going sideways, so here's what we need to do. We need to come together as one planet, one world government, and we need to come together with a new world order type of uh, marshalling of people and putting everybody into order so we can all fight this global threat together, so we're going to all come together as one and ultimately set up the Antichrist system. So there's a lot to be said. I believe these are... These are the things that we've got to consider and discern. I got hope for you, though, in the end of this. This is not all just crazy, wild conspiracy, but people are seeing these things, and these things are on the rise, and I believe we're headed towards, hear me, we're headed towards ultimate disclosure, where I believe there's a day coming where they will interview one of these things, and I mean where people understand it, where things begin to manifest, and they really show it to the culture. I believe that's coming for the ultimate deception and even the elect will be deceived. Now, Tucker Carlson speaks on this, and I think it's worth looking at. So let's take a moment and watch these two clips by Tucker Carlson as he talks through UFO alien understanding. Watch this. Curious. I've stopped being curious about this because I don't want to know anymore. You truly don't want to know anymore nope. about it? I think I know. I think I know what's up. Can you articulate it? No, I think it's a really old story. What is it? One thing that you notice about every world religion I'm familiar with, I'm interested in that topic, there are commonalities between religions. One of them, and this is of course true for Christianity, very true, is that supernatural beings take physical form. They all believe that. The Greek myths, Jesus, most famously, they're not just shadows floating around, that they're physical. They're as real as the arm of your chair, and that they reproduce with people. And it's described in Genesis as well, in Genesis 6. The religion of the ancient Hebrews, or the religion of the modern Christians, Hinduism, American Indians, all the same. So if, if every culture in the world that we know about has left any kind of written or physical record is reaching the same conclusions about something, maybe there's something there. Maybe it's not so crazy to think what everyone else has always thought since the beginning of time, but I think that's kind of what we're looking at. One of our producers gets this call from this guy who's a tenured Stanford medical school professor, and he wants to come on the show. And he's got tenure at one of the most prestigious schools in the world. So like, he's not a flake. He comes on and he's like, 11 years ago, the US government reached out to me because I'm an expert on head injuries, traumatic brain injuries as a physician. And they had all these court cases from families of US servicemen, over a hundred, who'd been killed by UFOs. And the Department of Defense was refusing to give them death benefits or medical benefits. And he's like, so they're in the courts. And I was like, there are over a hundred servicemen killed by UFOs? Like what? Why isn't this on the front page of the New York Times? I don't know. And in a number of cases, these things have landed on military bases, including famously West Germany in the 70s, and servicemen have approached them and they get traumatic brain injury or they're killed. And he studied their brains. This is all totally real. This is the Department of Defense, dude. Crazy. I mean, when you got Tucker talking about it and everybody talking about it, this is where it's going. And I'm going to show you several more here. This is really going to get intriguing. I want you to pay very close attention. Please repost this because this information is important. Listen to me. I'm not saying these things to you because I'm on some wild conspiracy kick here. These are mainstream people talking about what we're looking at. You got Tucker, you got so many people. Uh, when you got Clayton Morris talking about this and so many other voices speaking out about it, these are not just off the rails people. These are people that are factual. They're looking at it. There's empirical observation and they're realizing something's going on. But again, we're being marshaled towards something, what I'm calling ultimate 
disclosure. This is where they're headed. Now, here's an interesting thing. Recently, I sat down with a friend of mine through a, a video interview, L.A. Marzulli. And L.A. Marzulli and another one of his uh, co-workers went to the crash site in Area 51. They went there, Roswell, New Mexico. And he found something from the site that they found with the metal detector, and they had it tested and all this. I just want to show you the clip of my interview with L.A. as I was asking him about this, and this is fascinating. Watch this, what he found at the Roswell crash site. Watch this. Kimber's got one of the metal detectors. Hey, guys, I think I found a hit. No so, kidding. Come on. Yeah, we, we go over. We go running over. The camera's bouncing up and down like this. <laughs> There's Frank with the metal detector. Beep. It's right there. Wow. So he has a little garden spade, and he goes down, and he's digging this thing out. He's down about six inches, and finally he realizes, okay, it's out. So he's now we're sifting the soil. And eventually we're down to one handful, and sure enough, it's in there. And then we take some of that out into the other hand, and we go up to the metal detector. Nope, it's not there. And then we take the one hand that's got the, the leftover dirt. Beep! Man. It's in. So he opens his palm, and he goes, oh, my gosh. And he says, this is the, only, this is the second time in 12 years that we've ever found a piece of the wreckage on film. God is with you. That is amazing. LA, no, you're you, like Indiana Jones. That is I, amazing. I, you got to see the film because I'm like this. I'm like, oh. I'm like my, if, if, if I'm smiling anymore, my, my face is going to crack. I mean, it's just that. <laughs> have, have, you put the, have you put that, uh, that recovery piece through uh, tests or anything? Have you done yeah, that? We, oh, yeah, you we, have. Wow. So remember that the Roswell crash happened in 1947. Okay. So we found two pieces of metal. Okay. And the metal, um, it looks like it's about the size of the end of my finger, with my little pinky nail right there. Okay, Very yes. Small. And it's folded in on itself. Okay. It's, it's folded in. It's really weird. Okay. And something weird has happened to it. I mean, there's no, in fact, let me just, I'll bring this up to the camera. That's the real deal. That's, that's the actual piece. That's the actual piece. Look at that. Now you can find my interview with L.A. Marzulli, of course, on our YouTube channel, Joseph Z. And you could go there and you can find that. That was, I think, back in January or something. But here's, here's my point. There is so many pieces to this that when you begin to put them together, it's wild. Now I'm going to get into some more of the intriguing side of this. And uh, there was an interview. They call it an interview or an alien interview all the way back from 1997. And I want you to consider this. Now, the reason I'm bringing this out is because a lot of people have looked at this and they've said, oh, well, it's got to be fake. It's CGI. It's this, that. No, first of all, it was back in 1997. And uh, whether it was CGI or not, you know, you, you be the judge of that. But you got to realize, realize this is many, many years ago. And they had this clip. I've looked at all kinds of documentations on this, or I should say documentaries on this, this exact clip that I'm about to show you. And what they concluded is, if this was a puppeteer or puppet work, like Jim Henson's workshop type of, type of scenario, it is the best Hollywood puppeteering that has ever been done. Because the details, when you look at the eye movement and all that, is so um, amazing that it's nearly impossible to replicate or fake. Um, and even it being CGI, people said at that time they just didn't have CGI that good at the time. So you be the judge of it, but this is pretty wild. This is called the alien interview. I'm going to let you watch it, and I'll just put it on full screen in a moment. But you hear a voice that's you know got the uh, the voiceover technology going on, so it's all uh, difficult to make out the sound of the voice. But the guy's articulating that this interview happened, and the alien begins to convulse and get ill, and all these things take place because it was some kind of psychic interview, whatever. So here's the point. I want you to watch this, and this kind of stuff is out there. So let's watch this, and then I'm going to show you some very intriguing things. And I have something I want to share before we're done here today, because it's going to get really strong. I have a prophetic unction I need to release. So let's watch this clip right now. Comfort of the aliens. All right, we're looking at the interview suite at S4. Uh, it's kept dark for the comfort of the aliens. The uh, figure who is just barely visible in the left foreground is the telepath, and behind the camera is a raked seating area for observers. 
Although in this case, I believe the only other person uh, present was a military aide. The alien is seated behind a glass partition in a biocontainment area, which is maintained at biosafety level two, the lowest uh, designation. That's primarily for the uh, protection of the aliens, not us. The theory is that uh, if they were going to infect us with an alien bug, it would have happened 50 years ago. Um, in fact, uh, all the indications are the aliens eliminated microbial and viral life from their own ecosystem long ago. They aren't susceptible to our diseases directly, but it has been shown that microbes can reproduce and form colonies within their respiratory systems which tends to exacerbate the debilities they seem to suffer anyway in our environment. Uh, in fact, you can see here, the alien is beginning to flag. Uh, the interview was not going well. The telepath was trying to clarify some points from a previous interview, but he wasn't receiving coherent responses. As you can see, the being is in real distress. At this point, the telepath is uh, sending out a message to the medical staff. Uh, he's trying to communicate with the alien, but he's getting no response. There's very little he can do. He, there's no direct connection between uh, his space and the uh, biocontainment area. That's the aide stepping in on the right. Uh, the medical staff should be there by now. They're, they're slow in responding. There they are. I have to say, the medical personnel at S4 are less than first rate. They tend to be selected for their willingness to keep secrets rather than their medical competence. By the way, he's not shining that light into the eyes. It looks that way, but in fact, he's checking for hemorrhaging around the eye sockets and uh, in the nasal cavity. I'm sorry. It's very hard for me to watch this. Now, whatever you believe about that or wherever it's at for you, I just want to tell you uh, that video has yet to be fully refuted and there's a lot to be said about it. But, you know, quite frankly, I think that these little gray things, if it's really real and these things are really appearing this way and they're really uh, making physical appearances. You know, my wife, as I said, experienced one of these standing uh, outside and she bound it in Jesus name and it left. And so I just want to say to you, if you ever run into something like that, uh, I just want to say you should bind it in Jesus' name, rebuke it, cast it out, command it to go in Jesus' name. We don't do uh, pet stinkies around here, these filthy little creatures that are trying to pretend they're something else, and they're really just housing for demons. That's what I believe they are. But in, anyway, the point is, is, this is leading towards what I'm calling ultimate disclosure. Now, I'm going to get into some of the most interesting part of this, this broadcast today. You know, this is very important. I want you to really pay attention closely to this next part. On this part, I'm gonna show you the Vatican's involvement in some of this. And look, I, 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 don't, I, I just wanna share it with you because I believe that they have certain beliefs about what's happening, and I think it's important that we just take a look at this. So if you would, please watch this news broadcast or news program where they interview a man from the Vatican's astrology department, and he's talking about what is going on. And then they get in the topic of, is there alien life in the world? Is there alien life in our universe? And I think this is very, very important. And there's a reason I'm showing this to you, because I'm going to a second part. You're not going to want to miss this. Please watch this. Now, beyond NASA and ESA, the Roman Catholic Church is also interested in what lies beyond our universe. Indeed, the Vatican has its own observatory in Rome, but Jesuit astronomers are also looking to the heavens in Mount Graham, Arizona. There lies three very powerful telescopes. The Vatican's astronomical institution dates back to at least 1891, and it's already given us breakthroughs, like the first photographic proof of the green flash at sunset. Well, to speak more about the Vatican's space activity, I'm joined by the head of the Vatican Observatory, Brother Consul Manio. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's a delight to be here. 
So what exactly are Jesuit astronomers looking for, and does the Catholic Church actually believe or is even open to the idea of the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence? Well, fortunately, extraterrestrial intelligence will exist or not exist, whether I believe in it or not. Uh, we are simply astronomers doing the same astronomy as anyone else, with the difference that we can do long-term projects because we don't have to face year-to-year -year funding. But we don't have a particular mission. We don't have a particular goal we're trying to reach. We are a dozen astronomers from around the world, and every one of us is doing our own particular research project, whether it's the mathematics of cosmology or trying to understand dust that comes off of comets and hits our atmosphere as meteors. Now, does the existence of alien life contradict in any way Catholic dogma? I mean, do you understand that this could come as a shock to worshippers as it affects the, the claim in a way that men are special in the cosmos? Funny thing about that. Um, first of all, it's not going to be such a shock because I think most of us have you know, watched enough science fiction that we're used to the idea we're not alone. There was a survey done by the Center for Theology and the Natural Sciences that showed that 90% of every religion they in interviewed said finding other intelligences would not be a shock to them. Any, I think the bigger shock really was back when they discovered human beings living in the Americas. And we've gone through that. We're ready to accept that any creature in the universe that is created, was created by the same God who created us, is in the same kind of relationship as the rest of us. Now that's a very interesting take on things, and there's Guy Consolmongo, and he is the one that's going down this road and looking into all this. And so, you know, I don't, I don't have any criticisms or anything that I want to say that's, you know, negative about this, but I want you to be aware of what is being said and where this is going. So this is important because to, to know what's going on, especially in some of these areas, why does a organization such as the, the Catholic Church have a, um, a telescope in Arizona? And they call it, get this, Lucifer. The name of the telescope in Arizona is Lucifer. Fascinating, it's fascinating. So. I'm going to show a clip from a Sid Roth program from 20, probably 2017 is what I estimate, that he has Tom Horn on and he's got Chris Putnam on. And as they're both on this program, they begin to talk about their findings because they went to the exact observatory that this, this, uh, this gentleman who was just on the news interview was he was in charge of or is in charge of. They went there, they spoke with him, they got direct quotes with him, and then they show what they found and discuss their findings as they looked into all of this. So I'm gonna let you watch this and uh, you decide what you, what you uh, sense about this or what you feel and what the Lord is saying. Now, when I get done with this, I'm gonna begin to go into the prophetic part of what I sense is coming. It's very important. I have a lot to share with you. Let's watch this clip right now. Actually, research with Vatican astronomers, uh, what did they tell you? Yeah, it's extraordinary. We even had the opportunity to go to Mount Graham in Arizona, which is where their Vatican Astronomical Technology Telescope, called that, where it's at, where the, uh, the uh, Vatican's astronomers study the uh, deep space. And um, in the course of doing that, getting permission through the Arizona State University to go there to meet mm -hmm. with their astronomers, the Jesuits who are there, uh, we also got access to top astronomers that work in Rome, including um, an astronomer by the name of Guy Cosmonago. He's one of the top astronomers for the Vatican. What, what was the major thing you got from you had interview with him? Oh, well, two major things. One, uh, he says um, without apology that very soon the nations of the world are going to look to the aliens for their salvation. Now, when you make a comment like Did that... Did you just yeah. hear what he said? Does that show you how fast things are moving and how we're really in the last of the last days? And then, of course, you want to get behind that, right? You want to find out where are they coming from. So he agreed to be interviewed five times from Rome uh, and then gave us documents which are not available to the public that outline what much of the inner thinking of the highest level theologians and astronomers at the Vatican believe now. Uh, including the idea 
that Jesus might be the son of a star child. Now, when we ask him, what is a star child, right? right they're talking about an alien intelligence from another world and that the, um, the birth of Jesus Christ, the virgin birth, was in fact comparable to an abduction scenario in which these aliens used the Virgin Mary to create Jesus. And this is one of the ways in which they're combining the, 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 the idea that we are soon to be visited by an alien savior from another world. Hold that thought. Wait till you find out about the Vatican astronomer saying he's operating with Project Lucifer. Okay, I promised you we would find out uh, the, 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 this great Catholic astronomer, the number one, is operating with something called Project Lucifer. What is that? Well, up on top of Mount Graham in Arizona, there's, a, you, there's an observatory complex that consists of three very high-powered telescopes. One is the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope. There's a, there's a radio telescope, and then there's one called the Large Binocular Telescope. This is the most powerful telescope in the world. In fact, they told us they can get better images of space than the Hubble Space Telescope can. Hmm. Now, attached to this telescope is an infrared camera named Lucifer which is really a, a kind of a, a, an odd name um, <laughs> think so. for a camera. And you know, from the information that we gathered, this thing was named by the Max Planck Institute and some German astronomers. But the Vatican is part of this conglomerate up there, that, that, and they're all working together. Now, what this instrument's used for is astrobiology, for looking for exoplanets, looking for other worlds. And uh, the infrared spectrum is also very useful for seeing things that can't be seen with the naked eye. And many UFO researchers have noted that you can see a lot of ships and entities that you normally can't see. Tell me about what the Vatican astronomers are telling you, or what other experts, I mean, you, you had a research team. Right. Tell me a few of the things they're telling Well, first of all, the day that we spent it, uh, uh, on Mount Graham, the entire day there, we had the Jesuits speaking to us face to face. Mm -hmm. We also had systems engineers. It was astonishing the access that they gave us. And one of the things we found amazing in the use of the Lucifer device and even the other telescopes is how commonly the astronomers spoke of UFOs. We, we were just taken back by the fact that it was almost a nuisance to them I, I, that there are so many. But, but what they're saying to us now is it's going to affect Christian belief. There is a professor for the Pope's uh, uh, University in Rome, and uh, uh, he is a very highly respected intellectual. Uh, his last name is Tanzniti. And he has written a paper now in which he is saying that very soon, not, a, not right in the beginning, we won't have to um, deny our Christian faith in the beginning, but there is information coming from another world, and once it is confirmed, it is going to require a rereading of the gospel as we know it. And that's the kind of information that we are receiving from the highest levels of Vatican intelligentsia. Now, that's, that's a lot to take in when you're considering what these gentlemen are saying. Now, Tom Hard, God bless him, he, he graduated to heaven last year, and uh, so did Chris Putnam. I learned as I was looking at these, these videos and, and looking into this that he also is no longer here. He, he also uh, passed away, and Sid was interviewing them, and Sid's a friend of mine, and so when he was interviewing this, there's, there's interesting data they were bringing out, and listen, um, when, when they talk about the Catholic Church or things of that nature, I believe there's a lot of very sincere people that are sincerely trying to find answers. They're just trying to find answers. But here's what I got to say about this. You can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong. And anytime people are looking for anything beyond Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when it comes to alien entities and things beyond our atmosphere, you know, it's, it is a mechanism of deception that's being put on these, these individuals. So when you look at this, what a strong thing to consider. Now, what is the whole picture we're talking about? The whole picture that we're getting into here is I believe we're being trained and marshaled to go towards ultimate disclosure. Let me show you something from the Word of God out of Revelation chapter 16 
and verse 13, but I'm going to get a running start at verse 12, which is fascinating to me that I'm going into this scripture because I was just over in eastern Turkey. But I'll show it to you right here on the, the monitor. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Now, I was just at the great river Euphrates with my dear friend Rick Renner. Heather and I were there and Rick's team. And as we stood there, we realized we were at the headwaters of the river Euphrates, and further down, it is drying up for a variety of reasons. It's being blocked. Things are happening. Whether that is Bible prophecy or if it is indeed a precursor to it, because these things happen over time, and it could be a predicated narrative to the real scenario that Revelation is talking about. Whatever it is, we were just there. Now, this is interesting. Let's go to the next part, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So here you see the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. And each of them had frogs coming out of their mouth. What is this talking about? Well, could it be these frogs is the way John the Revelator was simply saying, I see these entities, these creatures coming out of their mouth, these lying signs, these lying voices coming out of their mouth because it comes out of their mouth. And these, these frogs, could it be that these are what is depicted today as aliens, little green fellas, little grays, whatever it is with the big eyes? And to John, it might look like frogs. The faces, the way they came out, he probably thought those are frogs. But to us, I believe this could be, could be a reference to aliens, what we consider aliens. And really what they are, unclean spirits, demon forces that are coming as a great deception because they're coming out of the mouth of these things as a deceiving voice. And I believe that is a very strong possibility for the last of the last days or even into the end times. Now, I want to get into this even further. Now, let me go over here and I want to talk to you. To the whiteboard. Now, I want to say something. We have heard more and more these days about Nephilim activity than any other scenario that's going on. And I want to say something. I believe it's so healthy that we're learning about this. You know, Nephilim uh, teaching and all the stuff about Nephilim, shapeshifters, all this crazy stuff, just even 10, 20 years ago was very fringe. It was way on the fringe. Most people didn't even know what it was, but suddenly it's going mainstream. And so here's my great concern, that in the middle of all this, that the church is starting to sensationalize things. Now, I've got very dear friends that teach this very balanced. They bring it out right from the Bible. They, they give great revelation. For example, Rick, Rick Renner just wrote a brand new book on it, and it is so healthy and biblical and clear what he's talking about. And I wrote on it in this book, uh, Servants of Fire. In Servants of Fire, I deal with this issue of all these entities and fallen angels and whatnot, but here's the problem. Now that it's going mainstream, it's turning in sens into sensationalism that's selling, and people are taking a truth, which is very important that we understand the nefarious things that are happening against bloodlines and where it's going, but you see a fringe side that is now flipped to mainstream, and suddenly there's a sensationalism, and everybody's into, you know, Everything from these crazy entities that came from Genesis 6 to, you know, where we are now. And it's, it, there's a distraction in it also. And we've got to be very careful because what's happening is believers that are going down this road without a proper revelation and a biblical foundation, they're going to get caught up in the sensationalism and they will become part of a problem where they empower nefarious forces to have greater authority in the natural than they would have had if we simply teach on it bind it, stand against it, and don't celebrate this wicked scum, this slimy stuff, Nephilim stuff, anything to do with aliens, Nephilim, shapeshifters, whatever it is that people are getting into. Um, I've heard a variety of different monsters that are appearing and all this, that people are talking about more and more and more, the sensationalism of Skinwalker Ranch, all of it, I believe, is very real. But that doesn't mean Christians should be celebrating it or sensationalizing it. We should identify and then communicate from the Bible how to stand against the nefarious things that are trying to manifest in this world. Because remember, the frogs that come out of Satan's mouth, the beast's mouth, and the false prophet, which I believe will be in the end times, are those alien entities. I really think that's a high potential. 
And when they do that, these alien entities are not really aliens. The things people are seeing in the sky are not really aliens or UFOs. There's no such thing. But they are seeing things. They are seeing craft. They are seeing these wicked entities appearing. My wife saw one. So what are they? Well, they're demonic forces. They're either fallen angels, or they're empowered by fallen angels, or they are Nephilim, that instead of being giants today, which could still be a real thing in the future, giants appearing again, all of that, or you could indeed see Nephilims that have really changed and figured out some things through technology and DNA manipulation, and now they appear as these little greys, or lizard people, or all these other scenarios that are happening that people keep running into. And I believe all of it leads to the same place, a symphony of distraction, a road of destruction, and wicked, nefarious evil that ultimately is leading to a great deception. Now let me go to the board here and talk about what I sense. I believe all of this marshaled together, they're leading towards an ultimate disclosure. I believe that they will talk to one of these things. It will talk more than that alien interview thing in 1997. It will talk, it will speak, and it will share insights or secrets. And people will say, oh, the wisdom. Oh, it's so amazing. Can you believe it? And it happens to have a godless agenda. Who knew? And that's where they're going to go with it, right? You know, I like one commercial I saw one time. We don't do probes. <laughs> so we're not into aliens around here. But I believe that these demonic entities are trying to marshal their way forward. Now, I believe we're going to see a lot of things begin to manifest. And that is, a, of course, a great rise, especially in the coming couple of years. We talked about this before, and then you saw it. You saw it in Washington. You saw it in uh, the the highest offices of government, where they had to begin to disclose and talk about what they had. But what I see rising is this UFO UAP scenario, and we're going to see an entity soon. I believe we will actually see a entity. And it will try to reveal secrets or give its wisdom to us and all that. And the bottom line is, you better believe they won't be a glorifying Jesus when this stuff happens. Now, what I want to say about another thing is, again, this Nephilim obsession, this Nephilim obsession is... I believe, number one, it is good to be informed. This is good. Informed is good. Put a check mark there. It's good to be informed. We want to be informed of what's going on. And this obsession is really, it's just a catching away of people's attention. It's terrible when you see this. But again, there's nothing wrong with being informed, as we said. Uh, and I put a check mark by this, informed, because... We need to know about these things out of Genesis 6. I think Rick Renner does a great job. My book, Servants of Fire, I deal with this topic. I go into the book of Enoch and talk about how it's commentary, not Bible. Enoch. Enoch is, uh, it's, it's not biblical. It's commentary. It's found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I go into all this stuff. But the bottom line is it's good to understand where this battle's going but this obsession has turned into more than just Nephilim. Now it's about shapeshifters. It's, uh, we're talking about, you see more and more people embracing the idea of portals. And again, I'm not saying these things are wrong or incorrect. I'm just saying there's such an obsession with it. And uh, you're getting into everything from, you know, uh, Creatures of the night to, you know, werewolves and monsters and all the things. And again, people are experiencing all these things that are happening. But here's the problem. When Christians begin to obsess over this instead of obsess over the answer. And look, I'm going to talk about this stuff a lot on this broadcast. I talk about conspiracy stuff often because we like to deal with it. But we deal with it with what? Jesus, the blood. 
We cast this mess out. We don't entertain it. We don't want to play patty cake. It's okay to identify. What did David do? He gazed at God, glanced at Goliath. Glanced at Goliath, gazed at God. So what is the whole concern that I have with this? I believe they're going to push a narrative until ultimately, like it speaks of in Revelation chapter 9, if we keep uh, allowing this, we're going to hurry up and begin to allow a, an opening of the pit. You say, what do you mean an opening of the pit? Well, in Revelation chapter 9, it talks about the pit will open from the bottomless pit. This pit will open. And if it does, it's going to begin to release all kinds of these nasty creatures, Apollyon, all this. And really, they want sensationalism. They want the church to obsess over this stuff because in Revelation 9... It talks about the key to the bottomless pit happen, and then Apollyon comes up, and these things will try to come up out of there. They'll try to manifest up out of the pit, and they'll begin to get access into this earth, and I don't want to be a part of that. I want to begin to close this stuff down, and I don't want to prematurely, as the church, celebrate this mess until it really comes in here. So I'll be talking about it. We'll be dealing with it, but I believe where this is headed is not only this in Revelation chapter 9, when you see the pit and all this stuff being opened up, but I believe what we're going to begin to see is society is the ones who are deceived by this stuff. The church should not be, and we shouldn't be obsessing. We should be casting it out. We should be dealing with it. Yes, educating. Yes, rescuing people out of it. Yes, talking about it, but in no way enamored with it. I hope that makes sense. I really do. I was talking with Troy Brewer, and he was just like, man, you know, we got to make sure we're not, you know, basically getting all hyped up about it, but it is important to talk about, okay? So when we're looking at this even further, let me go down the final avenue of what I want to say. Number one, what are UFOs? What are they? Number one, it could simply be a tech that we're seeing in the sky that we don't fully understand. Number two, it could be something like Project Bluebeam, right? where they project images into the sky to look like this for an ultimate deception. And people begin to fall for it and believe this mess. And then the agencies of the world take over and say, oh, we got to unite as one people. It's like the movie Independence Day. Here they are. Uh, they project this stuff. And then, or third, it could indeed be real. And you say real? Yeah, real. Real as in as in, it's demonic, and it's manifesting. Now, for a whole other program, we'd get into the topic of CERN and how this could be a part of the problem where it's allowing the precursors and the beginning phases of opening this pit in Revelation chapter 9 and letting all this stuff come out from the, the realm of the unseen into the natural, this wicked stuff taking place. But here's what I want to say to you. They are going for ultimate disclosure. And there's a lot of believers, a lot of believers are going to fall for this. They're going to fall for it and say, oh, we're not alone in the universe. These, these other little you know, nasty creatures that appear and they do these things and they're really intelligent. Have you seen this video? Have you seen that video? Here's the bottom line. Jesus is Lord and the things that are coming next I believe if we go through the cycle where we're picking out our leaders and we get into the place of, of a kind of a normalcy again, which I don't think is ever going to be the case, but we begin to find some uh, you know, turns that the enemy doesn't like, this will rise so strong. No matter who gets in, in the days and seasons ahead, this is going to rise so strong that they're going to push this nefarious agenda and Christians, believers, I believe will fall for this. Luke chapter 21 it talks about that men's hearts will fail them. In Luke 21, men's hearts will fail them for things that are coming upon the earth. And really, the implication of this is that something is coming through the atmosphere. It's coming through the atmosphere. Men's hearts failing them, failing them for what's coming through the atmosphere. And you say, well, what would that be? Well, could it be? We can only speculate. Could it be? 
that they can measure giant craft coming through. Now, whether it's tech, blue beam, real, whatever, demonic, real, coming through, this will lead to, if possible, even the elect could be deceived. And you say, why? Why? Why would the elect be deceived? Why? Because they can view this empirically with their eyes and they believe, my goodness, this could be it. But not you. You're not going to be deceived. Let me come over and talk right at you. I need to look at you. I believe you will not be deceived in Jesus' name. Not now, not later. No matter where your eschatology is, there's no deception with you in Jesus' name. The blood of the Lamb, Jesus is Lord. We're going red as the red church, and we're here to drive this mess back and off of our children. And I just want to say to you, if you don't know Jesus, you got to give your life to him. You really do. You can deflect this stuff, cast it out, get rid of it, and Jesus will be made Lord in your life. So I believe we're headed for ultimate disclosure. And in that, we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. Because we haven't seen anything yet with how wild this world's going to get. I want to pray for you. And just before I do, let me say this. I want to thank every partner of this broadcast. You're helping us bring truth, exposure, clarity to so many. And I'm so grateful for you. And I had it burning in my heart that we need to confront the sensationalism. I may have to go into this even further to confront some of the stuff that people are seeing, saying, and really celebrating. We need to begin to glorify Jesus, glorify the Lord. Yes, talk about these things, but glorify Jesus. And break this ultimate disclosure off of a generation. I hope that as you're watching this, you'd consider partnering with us to bring the fight forward and stand against these things. Now, many of you do, and I'm so very partners from the very depths of our heart. Thank you. We love you. Thank you for partnering. If you're watching and you say, I want to be a part of this partner family, I'd encourage you to do that right now by going to josephz.com. Right now. Because we will call you and we would love to call you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. We do it. It's our team. We want to reach out to you. We love you partners and we want you to be a part of our partner family and we will reach out and we will bless you and stand with you and pray for you. We never solicit you ever. If somebody ever solicits you pretending they're me, it is not us. You need to know that. We only call you to pray for you and bless you. And that's what we're here for. I hope you'll do it right away. Partner, also become part of our text to join list for special prophetic updates and prophetic journalism. 719-719-3637. You text the keyword join from your phone in your text message. You put this number in your phone and you text it. And then you will get a prompt and it's very simple and you can get all that. And you can join tens of thousands of other people that are a part of our text to join list. I got to tell you, it's important. Well, I went through a lot today, and I think it's important we do. We might have to do a follow-up to this. I think I will. And we'll be talking about how to deflect, how to go down the road, and how to not be deceived in these last of the last days. Even though these things are real there's, that people are seeing, I want to say to you, the narrative is wrong. What they're seeing is real, but the narrative is wrong. Jesus Christ is Lord. These are demonic things that are happening. They're evil things. And we just need to realize the answer is the same. Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Remember, no matter what's going on, even on a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. And you're going to overcome it all. I believe, God, that we can see the goodness of the Lord still in the land of the living in the days ahead. I really do. No matter what we're looking at. Father, I bless my friend. I bless every person watching right now. I speak peace to you life to you. Read the Bible till it starts talking back to you. Get in the fullness of God and watch God raise you up and break you through, no matter what they try to throw at us. I speak peace over you, life over you, and I bind this nefarious deception, this agenda of deception, and we receive your peace, Jesus, because greater is he that is in you, my friends, than he that is in the world. You're more than a conqueror. 
man, I got a lot more to get into. I just want to go down this road. I hope this is helpful. I kind of went down the road, but I'll tell you, I hope it's helpful. Jesus is Lord. Man, I got information. Get this book, Servants of Fire. I deal with this in there. Uh, if you want to really talk about some of these things, how to deal with entities and trains, strange encounters like what I'm talking about, demystifying the prophetic, I really deal with it in this book. This will help you. I encourage you to get my books uh, for your benefit. Today, I write them for you. I believe it'll be a great benefit to you. Jesus is Lord. Man, we have so many things coming up I want to talk to you about. You know, I don't write books just to sell masses of books. I write them because I believe in God. They'll get to the right people and it'll help you. I write them to help you. Well, I love you. If nobody's told you today, we love you. We're going red in the blood of the Lamb, Revelation 12, 11. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to be here for you through it all. Now, please, please, don't go anywhere. Watch this. I want to tell you about an amazing opportunity that has just been presented to us. We've had a supernatural door of opportunity open for us. Only God could do what is happening for this ministry right now. And it is involving television, network television, satellite television, going all over the world. Now, there's a lot in store for this, but let me explain. This is a word God's given us to reach a billion people for the gospel. And I feel an urgency for this coming year to advance and go forward because of the uniqueness of what God has spoken in this ministry and through this ministry in media. And here's what we have to do. To accomplish this, we not only have to buy the airtime, but we have to build out a call center and finish this building. And we are in the middle of it right now, but the timeline has just been sped up to fall time so we can be ready for the first of the year when we're gonna begin to launch out in television in a monumental way. Now, we've had an opportunity that is both fiscally responsible and financially amazing the way God has done this for us. And we have to take opportunity right now with it because it won't last long. So here's what I'm asking you. Would you consider supporting us helping us build out the call center, helping us finish off this building, and helping us with the budget of airtime. And it is gonna be a monumental thing, and the Lord has given us favor, and I can't wait to tell you more and more about it. But if you would consider partnering today over this, I know we can hit this target, I know we can walk through the door, and I know we can raise up a million to go win a billion. And I'm telling you, this is a God moment. It's a now word, and I'm asking you if you consider partnering with us over it. Maybe you want to become a partner, or if you are a partner, maybe you'd consider increasing your partnership today or giving a one-time offering. This is an amazing open door for this ministry and this broadcast. Everything we've prayed about, everything the Lord has told us to do is now coming to this monumental moment. Next year, we're going to reach the masses like never before, but we need your help. Please consider going to josephz.com right now and supporting this amazing open door. Thank you so very much.